Hello everyone and welcome to the ninth episode of Town Square Media Jersey Shores Ask the Chief. I'm Vin Ebenu here today in Monmouth Beach with Police Chief Thomas Walsh to discuss a number of things in regards to the borough, what's happened in relation to COVID-19, how this summer is the same and different as to previous summers in relation to COVID-19 and some other things, and we'll get his thoughts on a number of topics regarding law enforcement in today's society. Chief, thanks for having me here in Monmouth Beach and on a, on a beautiful day here, the sun's out, it's looking like a great day in the borough. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. My pleasure, Vin. So, I've had this conversation with other chiefs on this show and, you know, in the, in, within the Jersey Shore community as well, but COVID-19 has certainly affected a lot of towns, a lot of police departments in different ways with enforcing executive orders, um, paying attention to what's coming down from the state and the attorney general to enforce those directives and everything. And then even within your own boroughs, um, the, the changes and reacting to what's different with residents, with businesses, with people visiting. So what have been some of the challenges that you and your department have, have had over this summer and some things that have changed uh, as, as opposed to previous summers? Yeah, well, um, I think uh, it's been a very challenging last couple of months, especially starting off with uh, COVID, the mitigating measures that we've had to take uh, as individuals and here at the police department. Uh, coupled with uh, civil unrest issues uh, countrywide, uh, coupled with uh, uh, tropical storms, uh, one that recently just hit, mm -hmm. and uh, you know just a very busy hurricane season already as we're starting off. So uh, there's a lot of things that have been keeping uh, keeping us very challenged. And as you said, uh, the COVID response and dealing with the executive orders as they come out in rapid fire, and uh, sometimes um, as the executive orders come out more clarity needs to be uh, taken uh, so that we can follow the orders and see through it. Now, uh, especially as we're coming into September, with the schools coming into play, Monmouth Beach does have a school system here, K through eight school. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the next issue that we're you know dealing with, uh, issues revolving around school and helping them out, helping them to navigate, uh, making sure that it's done in a safe manner. And now, have you mostly seen you know, compliance, people following the rules and whatever directives around Monmouth Beach, or there have there been any incidents, whether it's involving a resident or somebody from out of town or out of county, out of state, that's yeah. been, you know, tempting the, the rules or tempting right. their own fate, so to speak? Right. No, I think by and large, we've been getting a lot of compliance from residents, uh, from the visitors, and especially from the business owners here who have been hit pretty hard. Uh, have several restaurants in town. Uh, they've been complying with all the orders and of course occasionally you will get somebody say oh well there's a person here not wearing a mask or these people may be too close mm -hmm. and with such a large amount of executive orders sometimes it's hard to keep track of everything going on and with the um, with the increase uh, of people here in Monmouth Beach the police department at times often really have their hands full so uh, the the fact that the residents and the visitors and the business owners are really doing their part is a big help to us. Uh, so, you know, we're not having any any um, businesses that are trying to buck the system or, or really fight against um, any of the executive orders. And at the same token, the municipality here, uh, the mayor and commissioners have really been at the forefront of helping them get what they need, uh, especially like uh, the local restaurants, to make sure that they have uh, the ability to open up outdoor eating and dining and the, out, uh, the ABC licensing uh, done correctly so that they can do at least what they can under the guidelines to keep open and keep their businesses uh, going. What is it? What has this summer been like specifically in comparison to uh, recent summers or other summers in patrolling the borough with not just COVID-19 related executive orders and everything, but the general well-being, the general law and order uh, around the borough around this time of year? Do, does it feel any different? Does it look any different? outside or in, including those executive orders are things really all that different in monmouth beach or is this sort of the typical kind of traffic and patrolling and investigating monmouth beach police do in the summer right oh uh, for sure it has impacted us greatly uh just in the amount of people visiting this area and i think that's the same for all jersey shore municipalities and monmouth beach is no different a lot of people were canceled their summer vacations from New Jersey to other places. So they're here. A lot of people are not in work, so they're home. And so typically where Saturdays and Sundays were a very busy day, 
uh, on a Wednesday or Thursday, sometimes it's no different than a Saturday or Sunday. If the Wednesday and Thursday uh -huh. is just as great beach weather, uh, the people are coming. They're here. They're off from work. Either they're, they're completely furloughed, out of work, or working from home and have the ability to be flexible enough to come here on the nice days, maybe save that work up for a Saturday or Sunday that's a rainy day. So the influx of people has been immense. Uh, the, you know, and, and to add to that, a lot of other um, entertainment venues are just not there. You can't go and hang mm -hmm. out at the bars. At least now you can in a limited fashion, but in the beginning of the summer you could not go to bars. You still cannot do indoor dining. There's no uh, baseball stadiums, uh, you know, Lakewood Blue Claws, all these places. Right. Uh, all these other outlets, great adventure, storybook lands, um, movie theaters. Uh, all of these venues are closed to people, and people are looking for an outlet. You know, miniature golf up to a certain point was not allowed. Uh, so the beach is open. Uh, the beach is wide open. <laughs> it's expansive, and it was one of the places that people could go uh, for entertainment or to get away. And people are clamoring to go to the beaches. And a lot of the beaches did the responsible thing and tried to limit the amount of daily passes. Uh, and there are certain sections in Monmouth Beach that... Um, are not regulated. They're, they're deemed recreational. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, there's recreational areas, and then there's wildlife areas, and in the wildlife areas, they're they're pretty expansive and wide open, and people are using those beaches, and they're not as regulated. We don't have the regulations over them at this time, and um, people are looking for a beach to go to. So when certain beaches max out in say Seabright or um, Sandy Hook or Long Branch, they're looking for any beach they can go to, and sometimes they're landing here in Mount Beach at some of our unregulated beaches. Have you had to, and some towns I know have sh have struggled, I guess a little bit, or had to delay the start to reopening beaches and boardwalks up and down the Jersey Shore because of the pandemic closing the academy and everything and the delay of class ones and class twos. Did you have any of those issues in Monmouth Beach? Did, have you had to call Chief Roebuck in Long Branch, for example, to with, to add extra patrols to Monmouth Beach to help with a particular situation or, or help with uh, traffic or patrol duty in, in, at, on certain days when things just got really busy around Monmouth Beach? Right, right. Well, I think uh, every municipality really along the shore is really struggling because of the issues that you said. I mean, for one, we have the influx of people, like I just mentioned, and you just brought up a great point. Uh, which was the academy closures, yeah. uh, which really affected our staffing levels. We started the staffing level with seasonal employees about 50% uh, lower on it than a typical summer. And this was a summer where, as I just outlined, uh, the amount of people here, which, you know, you, you have more people, you have more vehicle traffic. More vehicle traffic means more people on the beach, more chances of accidents, more people trying to clamor for parking spaces, more parking violations. It's like a domino effect. And uh, the lack of staffing definitely hurt us. It definitely did. And uh, the police academies, which typically release these seasonal officers for us, um, we usually get those typically right before Memorial Day weekend. Okay. So you can put them on the road Memorial Day weekend. Then before the real uh, summer season starts, when everybody gets out of school mid-June, mm -hmm. you've had that time, at least a month, to work and develop these officers' skills on a local level, uh, dealing with people, interacting with people. A lot of these officers, it's their first time uh, getting a taste of, you know, really interacting with the public. And you want to make sure that they handle that with the proper tact, uh, that they're not too aggressive, maybe not too passive with handling things. You want to um, garner with them the proper way to deal with people. And usually right. there is a slow phase in to that. Uh, this year, uh, because of the closure of the academy, we didn't get the, uh, the seasonal class one officers, which typically handle uh, parking enforcement, uh, quality of life issues out on the beach, and traffic direction. We didn't get those guys until uh, the 4th of July weekend. And then the Class 2 officers, which are you know, trained even more, uh, which work the road, handle calls for service, actually drive around the patrol cars. Uh, we didn't get those guys until uh, just last week. So, you know, and it's really baptism <laughs> well, by fire for these guys. It really, <laughs> it really is. So uh, they, they're getting training uh, in, in a, a large quantity and a large, uh, at, at a fast, faster pace than normal for, for here. Uh, and just as an example, and I, and I brought this to the attention of the mayor and commissioners, uh, the amount of summonses written for parking violations alone uh, was up about 300% wow. for the month of June compared to June of 2019. And June of 2019 was no, was not, not a walk in the park. And, and that's with 50% less staff. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's officers out there uh, really a lot of times responding to people 
calling in and saying, like, hey, these streets are overpopulated over here with cars illegally parking. You know, mm -hmm. the, because the officers that typically were doing that proactively are just not here. You know, so a lot of this is reactive. Now we're finally playing catch up. We do have the summer staff now all in place, but now, I mean, we're, we're gearing up for what's going on with school year for September, you know, so, um, yeah. yeah, so it's been a big game of catch up. Uh, as far as mutual aid with Long Ranch, uh, we, we talk uh, with each other frequently. Uh, the state police set up a great system okay. uh, of uh, CoreStat, which was a platform, web-based platform. Uh, for getting all the chiefs involved in, in the state of New Jersey to talk about all COVID-related issues. And this was a briefing that would happen daily um, in the morning, every morning. And as we started to phase into the summer, uh, they changed the name of, uh, it, of it to Shorestat, and we're getting all of the chiefs of police together on the shore to deal with the issues COVID-related and the influx of people and monitoring the beaches so we, you know, they can you know, help us out with... Um, taking care of the executive orders, make sure they're being enforced, and at the same time giving them feedback as to what we're seeing on the beaches. Are people social distancing? Is there enough room on the beaches? Right. Uh, are people wearing masks? And then give that feedback up to the colonel of the state police so that could eventually get handed over to the governor and they can make decisions on what is going on on the ground. Uh, COVID related or not, I'm sure one of the things that typically happens in the summer is you know pedestrian safety, driver safety, a lot more cars on the road. I know you had an initiative in, I guess, at the beginning of June, kind of with the helmet safety initiative. So, uh, what discuss that initiative? How has you know that been a, a affected the borough, uh, borough rather, um, in terms of safety for little kids, adults, the elderly, with the amount of cars and bikes and people just kind of walking around the borough this summer, and even in summers past. How how what are what are some of the ways that right. your department likes to ask for safety, ask for compliance and that and encourage safety in the community and and see where see what happens. Yeah. Well, yes, in a short community typically in the summer you you really have an influx of of motorists driving around and you also have an influx of people driving their bikes uh, and walking around. It's a beautiful short community, beautiful days, so you have all these people riding around, driving around, and the more motorists you have, uh, it, it increases the chances of motor vehicle accidents. Uh, we have done a lot of initiatives. One uh, that you just mentioned was the helmet uh, program. That was initiated uh, by the Monmouth Beach uh, PTO and the uh, Sustainable New Jersey Schools program. And there's a core group of parents and teachers uh, at the school that came up with this idea of a program. We had run it in the past and they had uh, a positive reinforcement for children wearing their helmets. And uh, if children were caught wearing their helmets by a police officer, police officer would stop to them, uh, you know, give them some praise, give them, take down their name, their, their age, and give them a gift card to My Kitchen Witch Cafe here in Monmouth Beach, great location, and uh, <laughs> plug to them, great people. And they uh, would get a free smoothie or fresh squeezed juice, and then nice. we get the certificate, and it's you know it was a nice certificate. It had the police emblem on the back, and uh, really we were you know although it was really targeted to any children wearing helmets, we really wanted to get that real critical age, uh, say like 11 to 13, 14, because those kids really set the example. And whenever I was able to interact with some of those kids, I, I would really hit that home, like hey, thank you for wearing. It. I know at this age it's tough, but you're really setting an example for the younger kids, and it is important. Uh, to be wearing your helmet uh, because it exponentially really can save your life in, in an accident. So, um, you know, uh, and I think uh, it's, you know, helmet safety and anything with children really is a shared responsibility, uh, you know, between the parents, uh, the individual children, um, even the schools, as we see, getting involved with programs like this, and the police department. And, uh, you know, it takes a village to raise children, for, and for certain, uh, you know, Monmouth Beach is a group of very involved residents, uh, parents, uh, the school system, the police. We all work well together, and it's uh, just another example of a program that, that we have here. Uh, we've issued out 50 of those, um, and we've just recently run out, and I've been working with the director uh, of the Sustainable New Jersey, uh, Natalie O'Keefe, uh, a parent, and she is uh, going to be getting me some more of these certificates. So, you know, it's great. It, it's great. Um, public relations for the police department. It's great to interact in a positive manner with of the course, children. Yeah, so it's, yeah. a, it's a home run all the way around. And uh, financially, um, it was paid for uh, by the PTO, I believe, and uh, their involvement. And, uh, uh, you know, they worked it out with my kitchen, which 
So it was, uh, you know, a great program. Does it concern you? I mean, it sounds like everything's going well with, with the kids wearing helmets, but, you know, up and down the shore, even out of state or whatever, I think it's just a norm in society that once you reach a certain age as a kid and it's no longer legally required to wear a helmet on a bike, then you, some people don't. Some teenagers don't. And then unless you're, like, riding in the Tour de France and a professional bike rider, you don't right. see even a lot of adults wearing a bike helmet while riding. So is that a concern for, for you in Monmouth Beach or in any conversations you've had with other police right. chiefs or other people in law enforcement about people not wearing bike helmets and then seeing these reports either in town or out of town of people being hit accidentally even by a car and then right. not wearing their helmet and they suffer some significant trauma. Right, absolutely. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, there's only so much the police could, department can do uh, yes. as far as enforcement. But, yeah. on, the, but on the other side, uh, you know, we do take a responsibility of leading by example. We do. Uh, we re-implemented a bicycle patrol here in Monmouth Beach. Uh, the officers have um, uh, electric bicycles, and mm -hmm. they can go at a pretty quick clip. But regardless, even when they were on a standard pedaling bicycle, they're required to wear a helmet. And that goes a long way in not only is it uh, required by us as a policy, but uh, setting an example to the children in the community and really the other adults, um, you know, and I think it becomes, um, you know, incumbent upon the police department through um, just getting it out there as leading by example and mm -hmm. also through our social media, we will put out there, you know, statistics on, you know, getting in a collision with a helmet versus without. And we try to promote that um, through like public service announcements, through our, our social media pages. but. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a critically important component wearing that helmet, uh, regardless of the age. And like you said, you know, unless you're in Tour de France, and we do get the bicycle <laughs> riders like that. And more power to them. Yeah. Yes, guys are, I mean, uh, <laughs> men and women are, are, are on uh, the State Highway on Ocean Avenue, and they're going pretty fast, and these mm -hmm. guys are fully equipped with uh, really good helmets because they know the importance of wearing that helmet. You know? uh, the day tripper that might be taking the beach cruiser out thinks, oh, I'm just going around the block, you know, it's not a big deal. Right. Um, and it's not, you know, required by law. So mm -hmm. uh, without that piece, uh, you know, it's difficult to enforce, and it's difficult to even, you know, try to explain to people the importance of it because they think, oh, I'm just going for a ride. I only ride this beach cruiser, you know, 0.5 miles per hour. What's the big deal? But you know, somebody veers off the side of the road. It's it's a critical component to safety is wearing that helmet for sure. I want to discuss uh, what I've just, uh, something that's come up on each of the Ask the Chief shows here, and in terms of what's happening to the law enforcement community as a whole in society, not just here in Monmouth Beach or Monmouth County or Ocean County or even New Jersey, but across uh, before the the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis and, and after, there, there's just been some rising tensions, it feels like, over the last couple of years with, in regards to what's what to do or what to enforce with different police departments, what should be done, what shouldn't be done. There's a, a defund the police movement right now. There's different requests going on. Should sh more social workers or social workers be added to departments, uh, which is something that Bayhead Police Chief William Hoffman mentioned on our last episode is, you know, we and even Chief uh, Roebuck, he said, don't defund the police, you know, fund the police so we could add those additional resources because you, at the end of the day, you're going to need police to respond to certain incidents to help de-escalate situations. So as you've, even over the last couple of years, as things have been changing across the law enforcement community and law enforcement uh, bore the brunt of a lot of blame, just kind of getting broad brushed for, for issues across the profession with some rogue cops. Um, what are your thoughts on all this? What needs to change for police? Does, is, does additional, is additional training needed? Uh, is it just more funding and support for police departments? Where where do we go from here? Yeah, um, you know that that's that's a huge broad topic. There. Right. You know it is, uh, and in some terms it is very disheartening. You know, uh, and it cuts both ways. I mean, sometimes the police department and law enforcement is seen as heroes. After 9/11, uh, the police officers were put on pedestals because of heroes that were running into the the, the twin towers mm -hmm. and. Uh, Paid the ultimate sacrifice and perished. And uh, right. at that point, uh, you know, police officers were, were really thought of in high regard. Uh, and then other incidents happened, and uh, uh, the George Floyd incident, as you bring up, and civil unrest comes across the country. And uh, because of a one specific incident or a group of incidents that uh, people put together, and they, as you say, paint with a broad brush, and now police are seen. Um, in a very low regard 
by a certain amount of people and the media may proliferate this or, or use this to generate activity and um, you know it seems to go in waves in my career here in 25 years I've, se I've seen that the police were treated with high regard and then other times when uh, you know they were kind of like down in the dumps and it's it's difficult for officer morale when that happens right and you know certainly uh, bigger cities inner cities um, have different challenges than what we have here in Monmouth Beach and you know right, Monmouth right. Beach as a whole uh, this community is is largely Pro police, uh, we're we're it, it, it's a different game. What what I'm dealing with as some chiefs that have a different challenge mm -hmm. um, uh, dealing with these other issues here. Uh, you know, they're talking about possibly funding the police, possibly bolstering the police department up even more, partly due to the COVID issue with all these people and all these uh, people that are here and seeing that the police are underfunded. And if you don't have those special officers, seasonal ones come out, you may need to actually, maybe we're running the police department in too low of a staff level right now, uh, just because every summer seems to get a little bit busier uh, anyway, because of the um, the larger beaches that have have come as a result of mm. uh, beach replenishment. So you know the challenges here are slightly different. We're, we're lucky to work in work in a community where there is um, a lot of support for the police, but at the same time, it's very important that even police departments that may feel like they're in some type of a bubble really have outreach because it's much larger than just where you work. Right. I have uh, you know I I, I have uh, great connection through a philanthropist here in Monmouth Beach who does a lot of outreach uh, to disenfranchised youth all throughout Monmouth County and uh, he was very uh, you know this is before COVID and all these other issues but I was uh, utilized him to help me get uh, Monmouth Beach officers to go to different places to the Asbury Park Boys and Girls Club uh, to work with the uh, lunch break to uh, work with um, a bicycle program down in Asbury Park uh, and my officers were very involved in that uh, very involved in getting uh, library books from here donated down to uh, the a library in Asbury Park and the police were instrumental in getting all of them together volunteering their time getting the books and transporting them down there uh, doing ice cream socials and working at the Asbury Park Boys and Girls Club uh, for the reason that you know it's important to get your officers out there interacting mm -hmm. with other community members especially the youth have positive right. interactions with them and um, some people may say, well, why is a Monmouth Beach police officer down in the Asbury Park Boys and Girls Club, but, uh, you know, in uniform? Um, and I think the answer to that is really simple. I mean, it's much larger than the small little community you're in. Right. You can have impact on people throughout the, the country, the county, or the state, and you can have a positive impact on people, um, then you should be doing that. And I, I'm a big proponent of that. Like I said, I was lucky enough to uh, hook up with this gentleman who, who is really a philanthropist through um, Lunch Break and Red Bank. Boys and Girls Club in Asbury Park. He's a great gentleman, and um, you know he was he was, you know, made that happen. Helped us get those connections. I think they were you know very important. Second Life bikes. Um, at one point, we had a bicycle uh, collection here, and we got permission instead of the auction to give them all to uh, Second Life bikes, and we, we were able to get all those bikes that were never collected and never. Um, accounted for any ones that were picked up or what have you and bring them down there and Second Life Bikes is a great location down in Asbury Park. So, um, you know, this is uh, this is all about giving back to the community on, right. on, a, you know, yeah. on, a, on a larger scale. As we close things out here on Ask the Chief, I want to ask you and I'm certainly, you know, ask the other chiefs of late as well. Um, in your 25 years here working as a police officer, working as the police chief, working as a law enforcement officer in Monmouth County, uh, what are some of the, the things that you've enjoyed over the years about working with the community, about coming to work, um, how, you know, enforcing the law and seeing how things have changed in Monmouth Beach? What are some of the things that, you know, you, get ex you still get excited about coming to work and, and doing every day? You know, what, what's, what are some of the exciting things about being a police officer? All right. All right. <laughs> Uh, the, well, you know, in the role of uh, the law enforcement executive, it really changes. And you do miss the actual uh, working the road, going to calls, the unknown of what happens, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, not knowing what that day is going to bring or, you know, how you're going to be able to help people, how you're going to be able to possibly impact someone's life. So you, you, you lose out on that uh, part of it as the executive of the police department, but as the, uh, as the police chief, you really have a lot of different buckets that you're trying to do all at once, and that's the challenging part. You're working on keeping the employees safe, keeping them happy, keeping the morale up. You're working on keeping the residents 
uh, very happy with the services that are provided to them by the police department. Uh, you're dealing with uh, the mayor and commissioners, making sure that you're on target with your budgets and make sure that you know you are serving the, the, the borough as a whole. Um, so there's a lot of different challenges there, and that's what I really like about the, the position of chief of police. Uh, you know, where I, 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 I do miss the aspect of going on calls. I really miss, you know, I was, I was a big midnight guy. I really, okay. I really enjoyed um, dealing with people that were intoxicated or, or on other substances and, and really uh, helping them out through a crisis and, and um, just, you know, the, the, the pace of the midnight people. Yeah. I was always a night owl to begin with, so that was my big well, thing. Well, then it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what I, really, uh, what I really enjoy still is uh, interacting with the youth. I mean, that, that's the big thing. Uh, when I became the chief here, I, I brought um, uh, Bring Your Child to Work Day. All the, nice. uh, all the nice. police officers here, the empl all the employees here can bring their uh, children. And we've extended it out even to nephews, nieces. And uh, this year was canceled because of COVID. And it was, I mean, my right. nieces and nephews, my, my children. And I, I run into <laughs> some of the other guys' uh, children. And they're like, oh, when are we going to do it? You know? Um, so, you know, that, that's important because it's, um, I just really like dealing with children. Uh, we, um, very involved at the Monmouth Beach School, uh, mm. for years, even before I be, uh, you know, I've been here for over 25 years, always had eighth grade versus the cops basketball game. It was, <laughs> and it's a big event. And the town comes out, the kids love it. It's an eighth grade fundraiser for them to go on their trip. Uh, that's a bonus. Uh, somebody came to me, uh, two years ago and said for a PTO fundraiser, they want to have a day with the chief. And they were going to, you there know, you go. raffle it off. And I was like, wow, who would really want to do that? You know, but man, when they came in, now they say it's the hottest. I don't, I don't, I don't want to step on the principal's toes. Everybody they, was saying it would yeah, Chief Walsh. They said it, yeah, they said it was a hotter item this year uh, than uh, the day with the principal, which I mean, that, that? that's, yeah, that's that's pretty impressive. But, uh, you know, to, to bring a young, uh, young man or a young woman in here, uh, especially a young woman, you know, to impress on, you know, because the, the, the profession needs good young people. And if you get right. them at an early age and impress on them uh, a positive interaction, um, you know, we need good people in the workforce. And sometimes, right. like I said, sometimes it gets discouraging seeing what's going on and you, you really, for the future, you want to keep encouraging young people. So to bring them in here, show them what the chief does, give them a little coffee cup with their name on it, uh, <laughs> take them out and let them write a mock ticket to someone, uh, let them hit the sirens and, uh, you know, sit behind this desk and, and, and uh, write a little memo. Uh, you know, it's really, um, that's something that really, I, I really brings me a lot of joy to really impress on the young people. Um, you know, just just really have those positive mm -hmm. interactions with them, really, and maybe one day those people will decide to go in law enforcement in some respect. You know, so that's that's what I get the joy out of, really. Yeah, you you still rank in the community, even <laughs> above the principals and the, <laughs> the principals. Chief Walsh is a popular guy here in Monmouth Beach. Chief, thanks for uh, taking out some time to discuss issue, issues, the good and the not so good, you know, in Monmouth Beach and Monmouth County and the, the law enforcement in communities across the state and the, and the country as well. I appreciate you giving your perspective on everything. Absolutely. My pleasure, Vin. My pleasure. Make sure you download our Town Square Media Jersey Shore family of apps, 92.7 WOBM, 94.3 The Point, 105.7 The Hawk, and Beach Radio 104.1 FM. For Monmouth Beach Police Chief Thomas Walsh, I'm Vin Ebenu. And make sure you stay tuned on air, online, for the next episode of Ask the Chief. Until then, stay safe, stay informed, and we'll see you around.